This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. It is 6.53, time to get you ready to take on your Tuesday in the morning sprint. The first parents are held criminally responsible for their child's school shooting will learn their fate today. Sydney Charles has the details. Sunny with lots of gusty winds. Mark Peterson has your forecast coming up just ahead. But let's get to breaking news we're following this morning. Norfolk Southern has reached a $600 million settlement in regards to the East Palestine derailment suit. If it's approved by a court, it will resolve all class action lawsuits within 20 miles of the February 2023 derailment that spilled more than a million pounds of hazardous chemicals into the soil, water, and air. The settlement also allows residents within 10 miles of that derailment to receive additional compensation. A joint local and federal task force arrested an 18-year-old one day before he planned to attack 21 churches in Coeur d'Alene. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland said Alexander Scott Mercurio showed his support for ISIS and terrorist organizations online. He shared a plan to attack his father with a metal pipe, steal his firearms, and attack a local church. At the beginning of this year, his plans escalated to using explosives, fire, a machete, and ultimately carry out a suicide attack. Days before he planned to attack Coeur d'Alene churches, he pledged his allegiance to ISIS and intended to commit the attacks on its behalf. We will continue following this developing story. Look for the latest on KXLY.com. In Boise, a, a jury is seated in Chad Daybell's capital murder trial. He's accused of killing his first wife, Tammy Daybell, as well as two of his current wife's children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. The trial begins tomorrow morning. Idaho court officials expect it will last between eight and 10 weeks. The Coeur d'Alene doctor accused of taking secret videos of people inside a bathroom in his office will have to pay a one and a half million dollar bond if he wants to get out of jail before trial. Spencer Greendike made his first appearance in front of a judge yesterday. He faces eight felony charges that include sexual exploitation of a child and video voyeurism. The alleged incidents took place at Rivers Edge Orthopedics office on Grand Mill Lane in Coeur d'Alene, which is now closed. According to Coeur d'Alene police, one of Green Dyke's employees contacted them about digital storage devices at his medical office. Police say the devices had video of a hidden camera in a staff bathroom that showed victims in various stages of undress. Police say they found more evidence in his office and his home. As we take a look at our forecast and our first alert weather, first of all, we're starting off mild temperature wise until you walk out the door. Uh, we're into the mid 40s, low 40s in Deer Park and Spirit Lake, Cheney and Spangle. However, the winds are in excess of 15 miles an hour, putting a little chill in the air. We're gonna continue to see those winds throughout the afternoon and it looks like they'll really fire up about three, four o'clock and then calm down after that. The rest of our forecast, yeah, we're gonna get up to 57 degrees today. Sentencing day for the parents held responsible for their son's deadly school shooting. Jennifer and James Crumbly will be in a Michigan, Michigan courtroom today. Their son Ethan is serving a life sentence after he opened fire at a Michigan high school killing four students in 2021. Earlier this year, Jennifer and James were found guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter in connection to the deaths of those students. Prosecutors argued the Crumbleys did nothing to secure the gun Ethan used and ignored signs of his declining mental health. Coverage on today's sentencing will continue coming up next on Good Morning America. White House today, this morning, the issue of abortion rights is once again front and center. Almost two years since celebrating the Supreme Court overturning of Roe versus Wade, anti-abortion advocates are criticizing Donald Trump's opinion that the issue should be left up to states. Just last month, he suggested support for a national ban at around 15 weeks. Now a reversal with the former president making it clear politics was at the heart of his decision. The latest on Trump's abortion statement coming up next on GMA. Spokane's interim fire chief Julie Oberg is now the permanent chief, becoming the first woman to lead the Spokane Fire Department. Chief Oberg has been serving as interim chief since mid-January when former chief Brian Schaefer retired. She joined the department in 2020 as the deputy chief of operations. Oberg will now step into her new role, appointed by Mayor Lisa Brown, once approved by the city council. Soon, renters in Spokane could have more time to find new housing if their landlord decides to raise rent. 
A new city ordinance requires landlords to give at least 180 day notice, expanding it from the current 60 days. If it passes, the ordinance could go into effect as early as June 1st. Spokane is gearing up to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the World's Fair held here in Spokane, also known as Expo 74. An official press conference is happening this morning to prepare for celebrations. It starts at 10 o'clock at the Spokane Visitor Information Center at Riverfront Park. We'll have a final check of your weather. That's coming up next here on Good Morning Northwest.